Chrysler Corporation, maker of these five great cars. Plymouth. Dodd. DeSoto. Chrysler. And the exclusive Imperial, the five great cars of the forward look. Chrysler Corporation presents Climax. Tonight, starring Beth Skelton and co-starring Ann Rutherford. And now your host for Chrysler Corporation, Bill Lundigan. Thank you and good evening. You've all heard the saying, there's no business like show business, no biz like show biz, according to the trade papers. Well, one of the traditions of show business is that all comedians want to play Hamlet. The funnier the clown, the more tragic are his acting aspirations. Well, now, tonight we are not going to do Hamlet, but we do have the pleasure of presenting one of America's great comedians, Mr. Red Skelton, in his um, dramatic debut on television. We ask just one thing, as this is serious drama, please, please try to keep from laughing. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Red Skelton, starring in Public Pigeon Number One, co-starring Anne Rutherford, tonight on Climax. was a night that would go down in the annals of crime. One man defying the power of law and order to keep him confined. Was he mad dog or was he genius? <laughs> With a casual glance, Rusty Morgan was typical of the great American middle class. Industrious, good humored, and like most of us, moderately superstitious. Why did I ever listen to you, Edith? The man is a nincompoop. He's not a nincompoop, Mr. Avery. He's gentle and kind and wonderful inside. Inside. There's your coffee, Mr. Godfrey. Just as good as yesterday's. Matter of fact, it is yesterday. <laughs> you know, Rusty, it's awfully hard to stay mad at you. Uh, <laughs> I wish you'd tell that to my girl. Say, Rusty, why don't you and Edith get married? What, and break up a beautiful friendship? <laughs> no, we're sort of at a deadlock, you know. I don't believe in long engagements, and she doesn't believe in short bank accounts. <laughs> Money troubles, huh? Yeah, but I've been working on it. As a matter of fact, I think I've hit the jackpot. Really? Yes. How? Uranium. Uranium! <laughs> Edith doesn't know about it. I used our entire savings to swing the deal. Fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, uh, how about a donut to kill the taste of the coffee, huh? <laughs> Miserable. Uranium, huh? Rusty, I wish you all the luck in the world. Ah, uh, thank you. Can I have my check now? First, let me get you a cigar. No, I'll get it. No, I've got an in with the cashier. <laughs> they make these nickel covers so thick you can't. Here, let me do it for you. Rusty, you and I have to have a talk. Talk? Another talk? That's all we do is talk. When are we going to get down to business? Oh, darling, we're on our way. We have $1,500, another five. Well, I didn't mean that kind of business. Another five? That means another year. How many good years do you think we got left? But that's why we have to be so careful. Oh, darling, you can't afford to lose this job, not when we're so close. Close? You're always saying that slow and steady does it. We've been going steady now for five years, and that's too darn slow for me. Well, we would have been married four years ago if you hadn't invested in that air conditioning company. Oh, have a vacation in your own home, bottled air from famous resorts. Oh. <laughs> well, the world just wasn't ready for it, so let's not argue. Oh, I'm not arguing, Rusty. I love you, and I want to get married just as much as you do. But every time you get your hands on a little money, you just don't seem able to hold on to it. Oh, now, that's not true. Oh, got... oh. Now... I'm sorry, Edith. You couldn't help it. Edith, this is going to be our year. 
I think I really got it linked. How? Well, I'm saving it for a shock. I mean, surprise. <laughs> well, is this the way you spend your working day? No, this is the way we spend our evenings. <laughs> oh! Treacherous little thing, isn't it? Here. Thank you, Rusty. Good morning, everybody. Hi there, Lieutenant Quillen. Hello, Rusty. Rusty? Yes. Yeah. What did you say the name of that company was? White Eagle Mines, Class A. Thank you. Thank you. What's going to have there, Lieutenant? You didn't pick up your tip. Oh, it'll be there when I want it. After all, how far can a dime go these days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, just give me a glass of milk, Rusty. Glass of milk, huh? Anything new down at headquarters, Lieutenant? Don't you ever read the newspapers? Well, I tried to, but it's pretty hard to read upside down, you know. Oh, here, here. No. <laughs> There's a $10,000 reward for the capture of those electronic swindlers, but we'll get them. Yeah. Say, uh, Lieutenant, have you heard anything about a stock called White Eagle Mines? Have I ever heard about it? Yeah. Oh, that one's a pip. Oh, you don't say. That's not even worth the paper it's written on. No! <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That milk is awful fresh today. I'm, I'm I don't sorry. Know why Are you sure problem. about those stocks? Uh, those dirty swindlers. How much reward did you say, Lieutenant? Did you say $10,000? It's all right, mister. Uh, don't worry about it at all. Uh, it's pretty hard to keep food down in this restaurant, you know. <laughs> Everybody complains. You're fired. Fired? Well, aren't you going to give me some kind of notice? That's notice enough. <laughs> Broke on both sides. <laughs> Things go good. I I see you around, Lieutenant. All right. That'll come in handy now. Oh, Rusty. Well, it had to happen. It always does. I'm sorry, Edith. Maybe it's for the best, though. The best? How could you say that? Well, I had to force myself. Yes, sir, the entire issue's been sold. Hey, Harvey, you sure there ain't any more of that White Eagle Mines? Not until we print more. We've got plenty of Honey Bluff preferred. Honey Bluff? Honey Bluff? What kind of cockamamie name is that? Just got a confidential wire. Honey Bluff preferred. Okay, pal, you talk it over with your wife. Say, honey, how come they're still buying? That item in the paper would have discouraged me. Oh, that's because you're smart, Rita. Our customers can't read. Oh. <laughs> good morning, good morning. I re represent the United Merchandise Company. We sell a complete line of household goods, toilet articles, and novelty items. We don't want any. Or uh, maybe you'd be interested in our newly patented uh, moth killer. This is one of the greatest little items that's come out in a long... Oh, that's the, that's the fishing rod, wrong item. <laughs> Mighty handy little item, though, if you're bothered with fish. <laughs> now, if you'll just give me your attention for a few minutes, I'm going to show you some of the most interesting articles that you've seen in a long time. These things haven't been around very long. And we've got... <laughs> That's another thing. Our newly developed hair remover. Need I say more? Yeah. <laughs> Start talking. I right, stand back. This entire building is surrounded by a squad of policemen. Yes, sir. You swindlers have sold your last block of White Eagle Mine stock. And I'm the sucker that bought it. Y2 calling 4X. Y2 calling 4X. Stand by. You're not playing with kids. <laughs> Let me still show you I really mean business. Don't shoot. We'll give you back your money. You bet you will. And a $10,000 bonus to boot. All right, now just keep your hands up. We're going down to the police headquarters. Be nice little boys. Nothing's going to happen. Just... What did you do that? <laughs> Stop it, Frankie. Hey, what is this? Did you forget the background? We're in a clean business now. 
We just can't let them run loose. We'd spot our mug photos at headquarters, we'd be through. No, I'm not going to let them run loose. Not with this town only half tapped for suckers. Oh. All right, what happened? Now well, there, how do you feel, my boy? Lumpy, thank you. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry Mr. Lacey had to do that. Oh, don't apologize. The ashtrays probably need emptying anyhow. Who is heavy. <laughs> my name is Bozer, Federal Bureau of Investigation. What? And this is my partner, Frannis, also a member of the Bureau. Federal Bureau? You mean your FBI men? Surprised? Well, sure. You sure don't look like FBI men, that is. He do well, I mean, uh, who's she? Oh, Rita's one of us. We're all, uh, undercover men. Oh, what? Undercover men. Undercover men? Congratulations, sir. A corking disguise. <laughs> no, no, no. Rita's one of us. I meant to imply she's been underground. Underground for a year. Really? Yeah. Underground for a year? Remarkably good condition, considering. <laughs> well, that's how we operate. We work ourselves into a racket to reach the higher-ups. Oh, sort of unsung heroes, huh? Exactly, like yourself. A citizen risking his life to fight crime. Who, me? No, all I want is my money back. You sure had us fooled from the way in which you operated. We were sure you were a government investigator of some sort, like ourselves. Me? Oh. Hey, Harvey, I got a great idea. We need help. Why can't Morgan work with us? No, no, no. It wouldn't be fair to ask that of him. Yeah, but with a $10,000 reward, maybe he wouldn't mind. Ten thousand. Maybe he wouldn't mind. <laughs> Are you a citizen? Am I a citizen? I must be. I don't know the words of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> you ever done any government work? Well, Can you take I... a beating without any yapping? Oh, sure. Can you hold that under pressure, even from the police? Can you keep your mouth shut? Well, I... Shut up! <laughs> very good, very good. Remove your hat. You're not going to hit me with that ashtray no. again. Oh. <laughs> Repeat after me. Repeat after me. I solemnly pledge. Really? I solemnly, I pledge, solemnly pledge. To uphold the principles of the Bureau. To uphold the principles of the Bureau. Through rain and sleet. Through rain and sleet. Till death do us part. Till death do. <laughs> Are you sure we're not getting married? <laughs> Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Congratulations, my boy. Congratulations, my boy. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks a lot there, but Wow. Big gun, huh? Wait till I tell Edith about this. Mum's the word. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That was the way it started. From the point of view of his fiancée, Rusty Morgan's actions were very strange. For days now, she had hardly seen him. And when she did, he hardly said a word. How are you, baby? Hi, you, Lieutenant. What's the latest scam down at the racket squad? Anyone for tennis? Rusty, what's gotten into you? Lose the shameless and meet me at the other end of the counter. I'll be wearing a red rose. I think he said I should get rid of you. You are a, a shameless, aren't you? Well, if that's what he calls the police when I guess I am, uh, I'll be around if you need any help. A little service, my good man. Well, I see that you find it's difficult to replace good help. I could replace you with one visit to a booby hat. Now, now, remember the customer is always right or am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Now, if you don't mind, fish the dish rag out of the urn and ring me out a cup of coffee, would you? <laughs> Well, good heavens, <laughs> serving it half and half now, huh? Half in the cup and half in the saucer. <laughs> How do you like it when the shoe's on the other foot? Well, it's a little soggy right now, but delicious. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Rusty. <laughs> Where have you been? Look, baby, you gotta do me a favor. Oh, sure, anything. I want you to go to my apartment and pack my bag. Pack your bag? Yeah. Put in uh, one shirt, that'll be enough. The other one's in the laundry anyhow. Oh, well, where are you going? I want to be ready just in case. In case what? In case the shirt I'm wearing gets dirty. <laughs> I want you to pack my underwear, my dark glasses, my yo-yo uh, trophy, <laughs> and you know the argyle sock that you knitted for me? Throw that in the bag too. You can never tell when you'll find one that matches and I'll have a pair. <laughs> You're acting so mysterious. What's the matter with you? What's happened? It's, it's almost as if you've been avoiding me lately. Let's just say the destiny's keeping us apart. But I don't want to be apart from you. Our destiny is together. Someday you'll understand all of this. You'll be very proud of me. But I'm proud of you now. Oh, Edith. I love you very much. Regardless of what happens. What are you talking about? What can happen? Goodbye, baby. Goodbye? What about the suitcase? Where will I find you? Well, meet me tomorrow. Sixth and Main, 11 o'clock. I'll be wearing a red rose. Slightly wilted. <laughs> Information gathered at that meeting between Rusty Morgan and Edith Enders later was to become significant. For now, the net was tightening. The Bunko squad was ready to spring the trap. But the question remained, was Morgan playing a cat and mouse game? And who was the mouse? <laughs> you know, this is the new issue of the White Eagle Mine, sir. I have a whole bag of it. Really going to hold on to it. You might say I'm holding the bag. <laughs> Hot. I know people that wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. 10,000 shares? Yes, sir. I'll put you down. Hey, Morgan. Did yep. you deliver that satchel of dough to Mr. Bozo, like I said? Not yet. Not yet? Why not? Well, my girl followed me, and I had to duck into a bank. Get to the point. Well, you didn't want her to catch me with all that money, did you? Of course not. We don't want anybody asking any questions. Well, that's what I figured when I saw her waiting outside the bank. So? So I put the money in my safety deposit box. In your safety deposit box? Hello? Investment Opportunities Incorporated. Mr. Haverstraw? Oh, yes. I believe you called earlier. It's a raid, the Bunko Squad. Let's get out of here. I'm glad you could take time out to answer my message, Mr. Haverstraw. Things are really moving in the uranium field. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard? They're splitting the atom two for one. It's going to be one of the biggest booms in history. Really going to mushroom. Mr. Haverstraw, take it from me, you can't go wrong with the White Eagle Mine stocks. But move fast. While you're hesitating, those Geiger counters are out counting Geigers. <laughs> Hold on a minute, would you please? Hi, Lieutenant. What? Huh? Uh, Mr. Haverstraw, I'm sorry I won't be able to deliver those uranium stocks. Uh, the government has moved in with controls. <laughs> that you always considered him your friend. Oh, well, maybe I'm just stupid. Oh, Lieutenant, please. Oh, sure, I like him. Rusty can be a bright spot in anybody's day when he's not goofing off. But this Jekyll and Hyde thing he's pulling has got me winging. Jekyll and Hyde? Well, is he guilty or isn't he? Is that naive manner of his oppose? He was conversing with uranium stocks, I know, because he mentioned them to me. On top of that, I catch him with his hand in the cookie jar. He's not guilty. There must be some explanation. There just must be. We've been begging to explain for the past 24 hours. He's dummied up like a hardened criminal. We can't even pry a word out of him. Not a single solitary word.
clear Havana. Want one? Will you talk? Talk! Now look, Morgan, you weren't in this thing alone, and by gosh, you're certainly not the brains of it. Ah, uh, maybe we're being a little too hard on a man, Cuso. Now, this poor guy hasn't had a thing to eat since yesterday. Are you hungry, Morgan? Oh, now, Ryan, how could we be so cruel? And us with a high-class catered meal right here in this room, just ready to be eaten. Well, look at that steak smothered in mushrooms. A roast turkey. Roast turkey with cranberry sauce. And a potato with butter oozing out through the sides. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Would you uh, care to take pot luck with us? <laughs> Show him the mug for us. Okay. Got right here. All right, Morgan. Now we're going to run through the file. If you see a face you recognize, sing out. All right. Denver Dan Jorgensen. Now, Morgan, if you've ever worked with him or even just met him, say so. All right, next. Jim 14 Carrot Harrison. Anything? All right, next. Ah, this face do anything to you, Morgan? It's known as George the Gouge, alias Fred the Gouge, alias Fred the Gimlet. Are you with it, Morgan? Morgan! All right, Ryan, knock it off. <laughs> All right, now, Morgan, give out. Let <laughs> me hey, out of here. I've had it. Me, too. I'm getting out of here myself. <laughs> <laughs> $20,000. Yeah, $20,000. In Rusty Morgan's safe deposit box. So ask him for the key. Useless without the power of attorney. There's only one solution. Get Morgan out of jail. A bust out? Yeah. Yeah, but suppose he gets knocked off. We lose all our dough. The chance we'll have to take. Excuse me, I'm visiting Rusty Morgan. He's supposed to be here, but I, I don't see him. He's probably in the laundry room. That's where he works. The laundry room? Oh, don't worry, oh. miss. He loves it. We can't get him out of there. <laughs> Globby glare detergent wear makes for happy underwear. <laughs> hey, Weasel. Yeah? You know that guy that tried to escape the other day? What about it? I don't think he made it. <laughs> Drive on Glubby Glub, throw it in your wash day tub. Glubby 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 Glub. Who are you, Puzzle? You want me to sign for it? Just a minute. Get rid of it. We didn't get rid of it. We're breaking you out. When you're over the wall, meet us at the Frolics Burlesque Theater. Be ready for contact by the grapevine, the boys. Harrigan, laundry room. Yes, sir. Morning. <laughs> Morning, it's real. <laughs> oh, 
always call you when you're eating. <laughs> Let's go, Morgan. <laughs> Investment Opportunities Incorporated. I mean, uh... <laughs> Morgan, what are you doing down there? You've got a visitor. I've got a visitor? You sure you got the right number? This is 2458375. <laughs> Visiting hours will be over soon. Oh, okay. Take all my calls for me, will you, soldier? <laughs> I watch with all the starch. Well, I put starch in the uh, warden's pajamas. I've been doing it for all the boys. I sleep like a log. <laughs> They told me you didn't want to see me. That's right. Why? Well, I thought you might ask questions. Well, suppose I do. Well, I might answer them. Well, why shouldn't you? Well, you see, now you are asking questions. Well, what did you expect me to do? Well, there's another one. Oh, Rusty, do you suppose I'm made of stone? Well, now there's another question. And one more, just one more. Do you expect me to go on having faith in you the rest of my life? Oh, Edith. I know it's an awful lot to ask, but I figured you'd understand. Because, well, you love me and I love you. I'm beginning to doubt it. Edith. Well, look at you. Look at what's happened. I don't even seem to know you anymore. Oh, Edith, don't talk like that. I will talk like that. Look, you're supposed to trust me. You're supposed to trust somebody you love. You asked me to trust you, but do you trust me? No. Well, I'd like to, honey, but... Well, I look, can't. I'm going to say some more to you. Uh, Rusty, you're in trouble. Whom should you confide in when you're in trouble? Someone you love and someone who loves you, but you won't even talk to me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'd like to, but I can't. And this is what I waited five years for. Well, I'm not going to wait another five years outside of jail. Goodbye, Rusty. Edith. I'll talk. I'm but waiting. I'll tell you as much as I can. All right. I'm a G-man. A what? <laughs> I'm an FBI man. Selling phony stocks? No, that's the way we operate, underground. We get in with the racket so we can meet the higher-ups. When did this happen? The day I got fired. You see, I bought some uh, uranium stocks and... Uh, oh, by the way, have you been to our bank lately? No. Well, don't bother. <laughs> I bought it from an FBI man. It's like a government bond. They, they stand in back of it, the government does. So that's it. Oh, Rusty, they made a sucker out of you, and they're still doing it. Now, I knew you'd say that, but it's not true. All right, now, who are these, these FBI men? What are their names? Well, I can't tell you. Rusty, believe me, it's your only hope. What are their names? Tell me their names, Rusty. Guard. Guards, see that I'm not disturbed on Mondays anymore. My washing is piling up. <laughs> Two days passed before Morgan's fiancé was able to see her friend, Lieutenant Quaylen. In that time, she had come to a painful conclusion. Rusty was either crazy or very naive. Close to tears, Edith Enders poured out the story of her meeting with her fiancé. Lieutenant Whalen received the information with considerable surprise. Gee, man! <laughs> he was all for calling the prison psychiatrist immediately. He always suspected, he said, that Rusty Morgan was slightly daffy. But Edith stopped him. Talking with impassioned conviction, she pleaded the other side. Gradually, she convinced the lieutenant that Morgan was merely the dupe of the con men who were still at large. And out of this conviction, there emerged at length a desperate plan. Help a prisoner escape? Gentlemen, do you realize what you're asking? I understand your reasoning, but suppose he did not lead you to the other members of his gang. Suppose all this came to naught. Then the reputation of my institution would suffer. Gentlemen, I must have time to think. Think, Mr. Warden. Think of the years you've spent presiding over your domain, building it into the splendid institution it is. Think of the golf dates you've broken, 
of your beautiful daughter about to get married to a fine young man. Think of your wife. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have thought. I will do it. <laughs> Vigoro, 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 Vigoro,
to be a slight delay at the infirmary window. He's working on it. is right, he'll lead us straight to the brains of this outfit now. I'm right. I know I'm right. Oh, Frolic's Burlesque Theater? Is Mr. Bozer there? Well, he has to be. Well, do you have a Mr. Frannis? Frannis. F R. Please don't hang up. Look, do you have a Miss Rita De Lacy there? Oh, would you kindly put her on, please? Hello? Who? Morgan? 
Morgan? How did you get out? I didn't spring you. I had nothing to do with it. Wait a second. I get the picture now. Listen close, kid. It's a trap. A police trap, do you understand? They're probably on your tail right now. Shake them. Don't contact me until you've brushed them. When you're absolutely sure, meet me here. I'll wait for you. Got it? Right. Oh, no. What happened? He got away. They lost him. Oh, no. <clears throat> Shut the door. Duck those pasteboards, you crummy shyster, and get out those papers. Not the tip sheets, the power of attorney. Okay, got him. Entree? Hi. Morgan reporting, sir. Where have you been? Been out in front watching the show. Hey, they got a comedian in the show that rides a phony horse and got a gun's funniest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Did you get rid of the cops? I mean, for sure. You mean the Seamus? Yeah. That was a cinch. I fell down through a, a manhole and I crawled two blocks through a sewer. <laughs> then they lost my scent. <laughs> I wish I could lose it. <laughs> Morgan, I want you to meet Mr. Stanford, a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer. Glad to know you. <laughs> Had a tough time passing the bar, didn't he? <laughs> It's shaving lotion. Shaving lotion. Well, what do you drink for your hair? <laughs> Let's not waste time, Mr. Stanford, the papers. You'll have to sign over power of attorney to enable us to uh, enter your safe deposit box. Oh? You're too hot to go near it, you know. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Lacey. Mm -hmm. I saw you in the show. You know, for an undercover man, you don't keep very much undercover. <laughs> Watch what you're doing. Hey, wait a minute. That's no way to treat an old man. Oh, thank you, my boy. But they're treating you far worse. Why, you drunken shite. Shut up, Frankie. Ah, you see what I mean? I'm not the only one loaded. Put that gun away. Get out of here. We're wasting time. How do we know he really gave the cops a slip? What's he stalling for? Wait a minute. This looks suspicious. Mighty suspicious. I don't believe you guys are FBI men after all. Yeah, it's like Edith said. You're making me the fall guy. Well, you can get yourself another pigeon, boy. Shut up, sucker, and sit down and sign on the dotted line and hurry it up. Well, do you mind if I read it first? You know, you can't be too careful what you sign these days. <laughs> I advise you to do as Mr. Prattis suggests. He's got a nervous trigger finger. Oh. He might put a dotted line across your chest. Oh. Yeah. I'll sign. Don't do it, son. <laughs> hey, what's with you, anyhow? That's to show you we mean business. Now, the next one's on your head. Well, I never did have much of a head for business. <laughs> okay. There it is. Who is it? Mr. Lacey, ready. Well, I'm on. Well, you're on, I'm off. Hey, what kind of a thing is this? <laughs> Something wrong? Peter Rabbit? Oh, yeah, you see, that's the nickname I had when I was a little boy on account of the way I used to walk, sorry, but hippity hop, hippity hop. <laughs> Not with a gun, we want him alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in the theater. I think we better forget the money. What? I must impress upon you we're in rather a precarious position. Should Morgan escape, he would most certainly put the finger on us. He won't escape. Yeah, possibly not. For once the law is on our side, he's a convict on the lam. This time you have my permission to use that eager gun of yours. Shoot to kill. It'll be a pleasure. Hey, Buster! Did you see a red-headed fellow around here? Oh, you mean a crazy fellow in rouge? A uh, tall, short, fat, skinny man? Tall, short, fat, skinny? I told you he was crazy. Did you see him? <laughs> oh, this is my corner. I get off here. Oh, this must be the place. <laughs> see you later, Charlie. <laughs> hey, you're on, John. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, you forget your cat pistol. Johnny, that must be him. I can't do it now. Them games are in the way. Patience. We got him. He can't stay out there forever. Get rid of the gun. You sure you know the routine? This must be the blaze. Oh, oh there are only a couple of burlesque comics. Get the gun, get the gun. Never mind the gun. I got it. All right, down to headquarters. You've got an awful lot of explaining to do. I knew I'd get you guys. Not only for hitting the little old man for what you've done to a lot of other people. You too, Buster. Come on. That disguise didn't fool me a bit. Thus closed one of the most baffling cases in the history of recorded crime. Little remains to be told. And that's it, gentlemen. So we close the books on one of the most baffling cases in the history of recorded crime. Well, tell us what little remains to be told. Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Rusty Morgan. Mr. Morgan? Mm. Mr. Morgan? Yeah. What do you intend to do now that you have the $10,000 reward? Well, I'm going to put it in my safety deposit box. In Edith's name. Mrs. Rusty Morgan. Thus ends one of the longest engagements in the record recorded history of recorded matrimony. <laughs> but the burning question remains. Is money truly the key to happiness? <laughs> Red Skelton can be seen on his own program starting September 27th on this network. Gilmore speaking, portions of this program were pre-recorded. Chrysler Corporation's Climax has been selected for viewing by America's Armed Forces Overseas and is a CBS television network production.